guys, so because of the new year, I really wanted to do a meal plan uh, based on Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen. And for those of you guys who don't know, um, Dr. Greger, he's an American physician that talks and studies a lot on um, plant-based foods, plant-based diets, and he gives you know big talks uh, all around the world on this stuff. And you know, whether you buy his book or listen to his speeches or whatnot, I think the, the one thing that is really cool about his message is that he does emphasize like vegetables, 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 and you know, keeping everything like whole and keeping everything plant-based. I feel like it, it doesn't matter like what diet you're on or like how much you exercise, because if you don't eat enough vegetables, it doesn't mean anything in terms of health. Like you have to have those in your diet to, to, to maintain, you know, a good health. He has this thing called the uh, Daily Dozens app. I don't know if anybody follows this, but basically it's, it's, it's just a checklist of like three servings of beans, one serving of berries. So as you go on um, in the day, are you checking off all of these things? It's simple, but not a lot of people can do it. I think one of the reasons that people can't do it is just, um, I know the importance of salads, I know the importance of like eating things raw as well, but I think one of the reasons that people can't do it is just like this meal plan hasn't really been adapted to like people's tastes. And one of my favorite cuisines and also the one of, you know, the cleanest cuisines as well is going to be Japanese. And I love Japanese food and I thought, hey, wouldn't it be a really cool idea to adapt kind of uh, Japanese recipes into the daily dozen. And for me, I know that it's better to have vegetables uncooked, but I really like my vegetables cooked as well. So I hope that there's kind of like an equal mix um, in this recipe as well. So yes, today I have prepared for you breakfast, lunch, and dinner that fulfill the uh, daily dozen, but you know, whatever you wanna add in between meals or you wanna like supplement to it, feel free to do that. And uh, this just kind of covers the basics. So um, I hope you guys all enjoy. So the Japanese have juice bars as well and one of the reasons that I start off with a smoothie always is because you can tick off so many check boxes even by the end of breakfast time. And for me, breakfast is a meal that I know I can control because you know later on in the day you might go out with colleagues, you might skip meals, but at least you will get these greens in for breakfast. And um, the little cubes of tofu that I added in the end really make this guy nice and creamy and I think uh, you guys will really enjoy it. And don't forget, you can pre-prepare these um, in Ziploc bags so that you don't have to make it every day. This sesame dressing is so easy to make and it's so, so yummy. So um, I'm starting off by just grinding up uh, the toasted sesame seeds first until it's fairly ground before I add in a tablespoon of sugar, um, one tablespoon of the gluten-free soy sauce from Lee Kum Kee, and then two tablespoons of um, an extra virgin olive oil. So for those of you who uh, don't wanna use sugar, feel free to use a substitute and I like the flavor of um, olive oil, so you can choose to use a neutral flavored oil or um, uh, if you don't want to at all, you can just substitute for water.
Okay, so this is a take off of kind of Japanese beef and tofu. And so I am using tempeh to substitute for beef. And um, this tempeh is actually 100% soy. So if you guys do have um, any gluten allergies, make sure to kind of look out for that. And I'm just marinating this for about 15 minutes. So the tempeh with um, one onion, along with some sugar substitutes, some sake, some mirin, um, a little bit of salt, and then also some of that um, Lee Kum Ki gluten-free soy sauce. So I'm gonna prepare the rest of the ingredients. That was some silken tofu, and then this is konjac jelly, which um, is used actually fairly often in Japanese stews, and it's made from um, it's made from a yam, and it really provides like a nice hearty kind of um, like a glutinous uh, texture to it. And I found these konjac noodles in just like normal grocery stores. So I decided to use these instead. Now, this is not a noodle dish. Okay, so I'm just adding this to kind of bulk it up a little bit to give it a little bit more texture. And with those noodles, you should boil it um, uh, for a couple of minutes first uh, before adding it in since it helps a lot with the texture. I added the tempeh mixture with about one cup of water and I'm just uh, bringing it to a boil and then simmering it for 15 minutes just until the onions kind of lose its harsh flavor. And then afterwards, I'm going to add in my tofu and then uh, my konjac noodles. And then this guy is basically all set. So the tempeh and the sauce has a fair amount of flavor. So don't eat this just you know by itself. I have a half a cup of quinoa um, in the background and then that will uh, suffice as also one of our green requirements as well. And you just mix it all together. It's so hearty, it's so comforting and so, so good. So if there was one item that I would recommend you make um, from this meal, it would be this abarage uh, radish soup. So I started off by just boiling the abarage because they had been fried earlier and that gets rid of some of the oil. And I have one kind of small radish that I've chopped up, about two and a half cups of a very light vegetable stock because you will be adding miso to this afterwards. And I'm just gonna bring this guy to a boil and then simmer it for I'd say like 30 minutes or so. You just want to test that the daikon radishes have softened before you add in one and a half teaspoons of miso. You 
usually the daikon radish tops are put in um, as kind of like a vegetal thing as well, but I did not have that with me, so I'm just putting in some scallions. And I think that this dish can check off more check boxes than I've checked off, but I'm going to wait until um, our final meal before I kind of finish ticking off everything else, just to make sure that the amounts are correct. So this next dish was originally supposed to be like a fried rice with um, some pickled or salted mustard leaves. And the mustard leaves kind of function a little bit like if you've ever had anchovies in pasta, kind of like that little bit of saltiness to flavor the whole dish. Now we are doing a, an oil-free version of this. So I started with the onions and I just put in a little bit of water so that it would soften and cook off. And you do see that the bottoms do brown. So we are kind of picking up um, some of that nice like caramelization, some of that nice color. So uh, after that, I put in one third of a cup of that pickled uh, mustard green. So it's, uh, it's salty, but it's also a little bit tangy uh, as well. And I just wanted to show you guys uh, this here and I also put in a half a cup of just um, frozen uh, edamame beans. Once the beans are warmed, I deglaze the pan with a little bit of sake and then some of that gluten-free um, likum ki soy sauce. So all of that goes in. And then finally, I'm adding in some cooked quinoa. So I took a half a cup of quinoa and then I cooked it, which turned out to be maybe, oh, I don't know, like a cup and a half, two cups. <laughs> um, and that all goes in. And again, this usually is done with rice, but I thought it might be a little bit better if we substituted for quinoa and then at this stage, just, just taste. So you might need a little bit of salt, you might want to add a little bit more um, soy sauce, but then this dish is also good to go. So one of my favorite Japanese desserts to make is really agar jelly and I mix it with either some beans or some fruits and it's very easy to make. You just want to make sure that the water has fully dissolved the agar. So boil it up a little bit and then just turn off the heat and add in your sweeteners and add in, you know, whatever flavoring uh, that you want. And then you pour it over the fruit, wait a couple of hours until it sets and then you can serve it with fruits or you know sweetened beans or really whatever you want. So I'm not gonna waste too much of your time on this. Everybody needs snacks. And there was actually surprisingly a lot of fruit in the daily dozen. So I made sure to mix it with some grapes and then the popcorn I just seasoned with some salt, some nutritional yeast, and then um, Japanese seasoning of furikake, which is just some seaweed and some seasonings. And um, all you guys have left is to make sure to do uh, your daily exercise and then also uh, drink, what is it, another four to five servings of water and you'll be on your way to a healthier you. 
Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this meal plan video. Um, it did take a bit of work, but I think everything is worth it if it's going to help you kind of stick onto a healthy regime better. So um, as usual, if you wanna see more recipes like this, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you all again soon, okay? Bye. Thank you.